hello. So we are back. But this time, let's learn something. Okay? Before I start, if you've seen that video, I uploaded a video probably like two weeks ago. Uh, this one from my other channel. Okay? So if you've seen this video, you know what I'm, I'm talking about. Okay? If, if you didn't see that video, it's fine. I will explain you now. On the repair business, no on the repair, on the electronics, okay? On the electronics. Um, on the learning process, before learning, you have to learn your limitations, okay? I mean, look, I have people, they, they uh, text me, email me with problems. Sorry, and I have a motherboard. I check every power supply. The laptop, uh, the board is coming on. I have no picture on the screen. I replace the Super I.O. The, and it's still not working. Only you can help me. Let me send it to you. The problem is that there is... What can I do? I mean, I know my limitation. There is no way I will take a job like that. I, what can I do? So that's the issue with the people. They don't understand their limitation. I mean, on a board, yeah, just set up in your mind, you can fix whatever is related with the power. You can't check, yeah, what is happening there where it's uh, hardware and digital communication. Like, you have, okay, on the IO chip, you still can check signals and things, but then you have the chipset, you have the processor, graphics, RAM memory, is nothing what you can check there. Nothing. You have like for millions of the transistors which are inside of the CPU or uh, chipset, it's one is burned, you will never find out. You know what I mean? So you have to learn to stop and accept that's the limit. Because otherwise you'll get disappointed. You will get frustrated. Yeah, And you have that feeling, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And I can see there, sorry, he is better. No. No, just I know my limitations. And when you know your limitations, it's very easy to handle the jobs. I, I mean, you know when to stop, okay? So let's have a look today. We have a job. This, this was sent by a customer, okay? And what is this? This is some tanner board from a car, yeah? Radio tanner board from, uh, I don't know what car it is. The problem with this one is no working. And the customer said, I replace on another one and it's working. So clearly the fault is from here. Now, if you check the board, what connection do we have here? Because we have no schematic. I have no idea what is here. Uh, I spent one hour, so we're going to jump to the conclusion. Yeah, I'm not going to diagnose here. I already spent one hour on this. You have two antenna connectors here. Let me make this. Let me zoom. You have two antenna connectors, okay? So those probably are antenna. And this probably is GPS, okay? You can see here. So you have two radio modules. Good? Good. Then you have one connector, which I spoke with a customer. Only plus and minus it's used, 12 volts. You have two more pins there, uh, but they are not used, okay? So we have only plus and minus. Then all what we have more on this board is this connector with four pins. Now, the issue with the board is uh, when you connect this on the car, the radio said that uh, it cannot uh, communicate with the tunnel. I, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that, that was the fault. He's, he's saying, the board is saying it cannot communicate. Or tunnel is not present, something like that. And uh, he sent it to me. And I said, okay, I can have a look. I can have a look. That's mean, if saying tunnel is not present, I suppose, I mean, I suppose the communication with this device, yeah, based on the fact we have GPS and things, must be digital, okay, on this connector. So uh, if he cannot communicate with my board, that's mean my board is dead, has no power. Or probably some chip is burned. Right now, the first test what I did was to identify the schematic, and the schematic is very simple. 
minus is ground. Yeah, just correct me if I'm wrong. Of, of course, I'm not wrong on this point, but later on, if you've seen something which I missed, just let me know. Okay. So how do I diagnose? Yeah, I will, I will uh, explain you the process, how I power up this board. Because it's not easy. This, those are tricky. So we have minus here, ground here, yeah? And we have plus here. Plus is coming through a fuse. The fuse is good. Then we have two diodes. One diode is to the ground to prevent to switch plus with minus. And one diode is on the serial mode with the 12 volts. That means this it's nearly impossible you can burn this board just playing with the wires here. Good. So the plus from here, from this part of the diode, is going straight to this chip, which looks like a power management chip, like a power supply. So it's coming on this truck exactly here. Okay, you can see I have a capacitor here, and you have those big capacitors which are exactly on the same line. And it's coming to this chip. Now, this chip is dead. I mean, is that dead? I checked online. There's no way I can I can I can't even find the, the the manufacturer based on the on the logo. So let me show you. But anyway, you know the chip is not dead. I'm just uh, I'm just on that point where I was thinking. You know what? Probably this chip is dead. I mean, I searched the logo on Google. I couldn't find anything. So let's go back. The chip is dead. You can see, even if I come with voltage, yeah, I come with 12 volts. I can come exactly here or on the other side. It's not, it's not important. We have 12 volts. 12 volts here, yeah? Okay, now I take the 12 volts out and I have 12 volts there long time. That means that chip is not taking any power at all. So check on the multimeter on the screen. Ground plus. Oh, it is working. Sorry, I was looking on on YouTube on YouTube, uh, on YouTube on the other channel. Okay, so one more time. Minus plus. We have like eleven point two. You can see that. I mean, it's it's nothing consuming current here. I mean, I took out the power supply and I still have voltage. The outputs of this are all zero. Okay, you can check any output from this power supply and it's all zero. It's not doing absolutely anything. If you check each pin, it's zero, zero volts. So the chip is completely dead. And I thought, there are two things. Either the chip is dead, but it's weird because those uh, uh, chips from switching power supply, they blow up. And, but the fuse is good on this case. And I said, you know what? Let's start on a different direction. Okay, let's ignore this. And uh, here we have a connection. Maybe some power comes for this connection and start the board. Because if you remember the amplifiers or... Uh, amplifier is a good example. You start the radio and the 12 volts come to which are special wire to power up the amplifier. So the amplifier is always connected to 12 volts, uh, the big amperage uh, wires. But you have a small wire which, when you bring 12 volts, the amplifier it will start working. Of course, here is not the case. I don't believe here will be 12 volts. Here we can see two data lines, like USB lines. Okay? What do we have here? We have a chip, and this you can find info, and I search for info. This is Atmega, Atmega chip, Atmel. I did play with Atmega 8, I remember, in the past, and it's very addictive. Uh, on that time, when I play, uh, uh, basically, you can do whatever you want with that chip. Whatever you want to do it, you can program that chip and make it do it. Good, let's come back to this board. So we have two data lines, yeah, probably clock and data, which is coming here, and from here you can see them. You can see them are going to my uh, microcontroller. Yeah, this is a microcontroller. Now, we do have two more pins, yes, yeah? so two are for data and two are for, one is ground and one is plus. 
and the plus. So let's have a look together. Just try to understand the process I go through to find the schematic, okay? So that's the plus. The plus is coming here, and from here we have a ground. Here we have ground. Here we have a carbon resistor, capacitor to ground. From here, capacitor to ground. And from here, I check with the beeping. And we have two places where the plus is going, or where this plus is going. Yeah, so the plus, which is one, one pin here. One is here, and one, one resistor here. And one is here on this resistor. Okay, so let's have a look one more time. So one plus is going here, exactly here. And here we have a 56 kilo ohms resistor, and it's going to this pin of this chip. Okay, and the other plus, the other plus is going here. Yeah, I did solder something, I'll show you later, yeah? From here we have a resistor, then we have a transistor, here is ground, and from here is coming straight here. You see three pins together, you see those, those uh, pad? And uh, how, how, do you, how do you understand if the power is coming from here or is coming from here outside? Because uh, it's very simple, like on our case. From here, we have two resistors here. Yeah, like 56 kilo ohms, and this one, I don't know what value is, but same, big. That means the power, it will not go out from here, just because you have resistors in the serial mode with uh, that power rail, which we believe it's a power rail. So the power must come from here. That can be logical, yeah? I mean, when I plug the connector, the board is coming on. Or when I start the radio, the board is coming on. So I did check. Of course, you need a second power supply. I'm using a battery, okay? Let me solder the battery and make you understand. Because, you know, that's the way how you can uh, figure out the schematic of a board like this. You know, otherwise, how you can fix it. This is a battery which has like 5 volts. 5 volts must be there. I did check. So, with 5 volts here... Or nearly 5 volts. It's not 5, probably it's 4 and something. Let's check together. So we have here 3.7 volts. Okay, anyway, on that point of the chip, on that pins, those pins, uh, here, okay, we have 2.5. If the battery has four, 5 volts, here should be 3.3, but that's not important. Just pay attention on our power supply. Uh, you can't, because we don't have 12 volts. Let's come with 12 volts. 12 volts. Let me see how can I keep the wires and the probes. So, 2 to ground. 1 is the 12 volts. Yeah, and 1 is the multimeter. Okay. So I said 12 volts here, okay? And you can see on the power supply is taking current. Now we have here, we have 3.2, you can see on the screen. Good. Here we have 5 volts, you can see on the screen. Good. Here we have 1.1. And you have few more outputs here around. But the board is working, so the chip it's on right now. Okay, if I disconnect the battery, it's off. Good. Now let's go and concentrate to this chip. I mean, if it's not communicating with the radio, either the chip is dead or has no power. Uh, this resistor, what you can see it here. 
Yeah. So right now on this resistor, let's see what we have on this resistor. On this resistor we have here on this side 3.7 because that's the battery voltage. And on the other side we have 0 0.1. And uh, this can mean a lot. This is the V-bus pin. Yeah, I did search for the data sheet. This is the V-bus pin. Now you can think, okay, does mean the chip doesn't have voltage? We can check that because I have the data sheet. It's very easy to find the data sheet of this chip. Yeah, give me one second. So we have here, yeah, the schematic of the chip. Our pin 34, number 34 is VBUS. And we have some voltages like here, like here, like uh, we have few more uh, uh, pins with voltage. And where well, we can check if we have 3.3 or not. Okay. So let me see, let me see. So the pin number 27, okay, 27 is this. And you can see on the screen we have 3.2 volts. Okay. Then we have the pin number 53. Pin number 53, which is this one. And you can see on the screen we have 3.2. So the chip has voltages. But the VBUS, it's weird. I mean, why the chip doesn't want to speak? with the radio and uh, this is weird why here I have like 0 0.1 this is very weird and if I have 5 volts on the battery actually there I have like 1.2 volts and you can see the schematic I mean on the outputs on these two data data lines I have 0 volts nothing and it's coming from here. So those both are coming from the chip. Here is coming to this uh, probably mostly for protection and things. And from here is coming to this socket. Yeah, you can see it. This is a USB connection. I mean, it's nothing else than a USB connection. So you see, I know my limitation. And uh, if the chip is... Uh, has power but he doesn't want to speak with my radio it's nothing what i can do and you see that's the point when i stop and i'm not frustrated yeah i'm not disappointed because i know that's the limit so i did check the power supplies i did check with the thermal camera uh, everything seems to be fine the 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 ad mega chip this is a chip which is programmed from the factory yeah so I cannot just replace it. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. Now, even with a the thermal camera, let me see if I can show you. Uh, this is 12 volts, okay. So we have the board. Now let's come with 12 volts. 12 volts. And we can see this chip, yeah, the Amtel one. It's normal. I mean, it's not hot, it's not warm. We can see the power supply chip, which is there. Yeah, which is on and working. So everything seems to be fine. But my chip doesn't want to speak on those two lines with the, with the radio. And also on VBUS, that voltage... That voltage is telling me nothing. I mean, I can't see why there should be that kind of voltage. I mean, I will expect like 3.3 or 5 volts. But like 1 volt or 0 point doesn't really, really make sense. I just try to give you an example where the electronics is meeting the software is the point where you have to stop. Because it's nothing what we can do. It's nothing what you can check and nothing to be replaced. I cannot replace this. Because it has a program inside. Pretty sad.
Well, to figure it out, all these uh, problems, it took me like one hour. Just to understand how the Borg works. I mean, you cannot uh, just come with like random voltage or things like that. And there's nothing shorted on this board. Like how I said, the fuse from the input is good. You have to understand the schematic to mo move further, yeah? That is all about, about the, in, this, in this video, it's about the limitation. If you understand your limitation regarding the laptops or phones or whatever, you will be happy. Even if you don't fix something, you will be, you, no, at least you will not be frustrated. Okay, you didn't got the money. Okay. Maybe a little bit sad. But not frustrated. Yeah, because that's the, that's the limit. It's nothing what you can do. If the chip it will speak with the radio, probably it will get an error. But this chip doesn't want to speak with the radio at all. I'll show, uh, yeah, yeah, the customer said, no, the tunnel is not detected. Yeah, that's the error. So that means my chip is not speaking with, uh, with the radio. And the radio is good, like how I said, the customer replaced the board with another board and it's working. Power supplies are good. I have power everywhere. I checked with the thermal camera. Power goes on every of this module. Not much what I can do. Not much what I can do. Okay. So I'll stop now. Just, you know, maybe you have this board. I don't know what board it is. If you're looking uh, to fix a board like this, just keep in mind. You need 5 volts here to bring up uh, this power supply to start working. Otherwise, it will not work. Okay? Yeah, pretty shame. Yeah, this is a microcontroller. It's a nice one. Well, what can I say? Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you like the video. And keep in mind, you can't fix everything yeah so uh, don't get frustrated you know start you have to stop on that point where you know you can't go further you know you, you already you have hardware and software what you can do no much what what you can do okay I'll see you on the next one bye